Hey friends, welcome to A Word from the Word. Maybe today we should rename that A Word from the Woods, since I'm filming from one of my very favorite locations in the entire Shenandoah Valley. It's a place of quiet, a place of solitude, a place where I can just come and get alone before the Lord. And I pray that you found that spot for yourself as well over the past few weeks. Maybe it's some place in your house. Uh, maybe it's some place that you drive to or walk to. But I pray that you've had a chance to reconnect with the Lord through His Word, through prayer, and just being alone in His presence. I also hope that you've had a chance uh, over the past few weeks to reconnect as a family. I know that me and my family have, have done that. We've really enjoyed the slower pace of life. We've enjoyed our extended times in the morning uh, during our family devotions and prayer time. We have certainly played our share of games. Uh, we've probably played more games in the past couple weeks than we have in a long, long time. And we have definitely binge watched some TV shows and some movies over the past few weeks. Uh, one movie in particular, uh, that we watched a few weeks ago. Uh, I had not seen in years, really, probably since it first came out, and it was The Hunger Games. And I'm not here to do a movie review on whether you should watch that movie or not, or whether it's a good movie or not. Uh, I personally enjoyed it. Um, but one particular line in that movie stood out to me, and for those of you who have seen that movie before, you'll know that uh, President Snow was played by Donald Sutherland, and he made a statement in that movie, and it's this. He says, the only thing, or hope is the only thing greater than fear. Hope is the only thing greater than fear. And I think that stood out to me just because there is so much fear in the world right now, uh, especially with this global pandemic. Uh, people are, there's so much uncertainty, you know, just with the economy, people are losing their jobs, uh, businesses are closing, and just with the virus itself, you know, we're not sure uh, how long this is going to last, how widespread it's going to be. And so a lot of that uncertainty uh, causes people to be gripped with fear. And so um, I think that's why that line stood out to me so much. And so I really wanted to answer that question, is hope the only thing that's stronger than fear? And so, friends, for the next few minutes, uh, I just want to spend some time in God's Word to discover the answer to that question. Um, if you look up the word hope in a, in a concordance, uh, you'll discover that the Bible has a lot to say about that subject. Um, you're going to find some very familiar verses uh, with the word hope in it. Uh, for instance, 1 Peter 1.3 says this, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to His great mercy, He has caused us to be born again unto a living hope. And one of my personal favorites is Hebrews 6.19. It says, We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. Jeremiah 29.11, so many know this one by art. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. So many familiar verses with, with the word hope in it. But there was one particular one that, that I came across that really helped to answer that question in my heart. And it's 1 Corinthians uh, 13, 13, and it says this, And now there remains these, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. You know, the book of 1 Corinthians, the books of 1 and 2 Corinthians, were both written by Paul uh, to the church at Corinth. The church at Corinth is a church that Paul had planted on his um, second missionary journey. Uh, he had established that. He had established them in the word, in the faith. Uh, but he had written this letter to them. Uh, it's a letter both of correction and instruction. Uh, because the Corinthians had, uh, first of all, allowed some sin to creep back into the church. Uh, they were having a really hard time uh, letting some of their old customs go, letting some of their old sins go. And so Paul was writing a pretty bold letter the, to them, uh, correcting them and letting them know what, uh, what holiness, what a holy life looked like, uh, what a church looked like, how they should function together. Uh, so in that, uh, he wrote some instructions as well. Uh, you know, just what the different giftings look like, how the Holy Spirit uh, gifted different folks differently uh, for the building up or the edification of the church. And right in the middle of, of those chapters when he's uh, giving some instruction there, he writes chapter 13, and 
even if you haven't read that before or are not familiar with 1 Corinthians uh, 13, you've at least heard it read before. Probably at every wedding that you've ever attended, you've heard some verses from 1 Corinthians 13. And it's called the love chapter. You know, and it starts out, love is patient, love is kind. And I know some of you, uh, those words are, are familiar to you right now uh, as you hear that. And so um, Paul just kind of boils it down to, to three main virtues there at the end. He said, you know, these three remain faith, hope, and love. But he doesn't stop there. He says, the greatest of these is love. And so that brings up another question. Why did Paul put love above the other two? Why did he say love is greater than hope and faith? Those are two very important virtues in the life of the believer. And he writes that because faith and hope are both dependent on love. Let me tell you what I mean. Paul writes a few lines earlier in, in verse 2. He says, Though I have all the faith so that I could even remove mountains, but I have not love, I have nothing so you see, love is the catalyst. Um, love is the, is the part that activates our faith, our hope. It's, it's the reason for our hope, right? And so I'm not downplaying faith and hope. Um, those are both very important virtues uh, in the life of the believer. As a matter of fact, in Hebrews 11, it says, Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Think about that for a second. And then Romans 5 says this, says that God is the God of all hope. And so we see from those two verses and many others like them that faith and hope are very important in the life of the believer. But in 1 John 4, 8, the Bible says this. It says, God is love. He doesn't just possess love. He doesn't just give love. God is love. God is love. And so the only reason that we can have faith, the only reason that we can have hope, that we can love others, and that we can love God as Jesus commanded us to, it's because God first loved us and because God is love. It's who He is. It's His very nature. And so is hope the only thing that's stronger than fear, as President Snow said? No. No, it's not. Love is. According to 1 John 4.18, it says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out all fear. What a great verse. So friends, if you are fearful today, just know that God sees you. God loves you today. As a matter of fact, God loved you so much that He sent His one and only Son to pay the penalty for your sin and for my sin. You know, your sin separated you from a holy God. It, it broke the fellowship that mankind had with God. But when you trust in Jesus, you are now restored to God. That's nothing that you can do on your own. That's something that only God can do. For what the law could not do, the Word says, God did. I love this beautiful promise in, in Romans 8 starts in verse 37 and it says yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us for i am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of god which is in christ jesus our lord what a beautiful and powerful promise that once you place your trust in Christ, nothing can separate you from His love, not even fear. So friends, fear is no match for love. Love is greater than fear. So I hope that answered the question today. Hope is not the only thing greater than fear. It's love. Love is greater. And I pray that you have faith today. I pray that you have hope today. And I pray that you know the love of the Lord today. And if you don't, just know that today is the day of salvation. You can make that right today. You can have peace with God today. So I'm going to pray for you right now. And then I pray you guys have a great day. 
So, Father God, just thank you so much for your abiding presence. Thank you so much for your word, Lord God. Um, You tell us that your word is living and active and powerful, more powerful than any two-edged sword. And, Lord God, I pray that your word would not return void today, that if someone is watching this and they have not trusted you as as their Savior, I pray that they would uh, pause this right now and that they would make that right with you, that they would hit their knees and that they would... um, Lord, just surrender their lives to you, Father God. I pray if there's someone just, maybe they've trusted you as Savior, but um, some fear has gripped their heart. Lord God, I pray that you would comfort them with your love, Lord God. I pray that you would surround them and remind them of the promises in your word that nothing shall separate them from your love, Lord God. So thank you so much. Thank you for loving us, Lord. And uh, thank you for being on the other side of this pandemic already. Thank you that we can trust you enough um, that you will guide us through this, Lord God. Thank you for your wisdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, have a great day. I'll talk to you later.